Thank you. I want to thank the organizers for giving you an opportunity to tell you about the exciting work we're doing at Visite. I also appreciate coming after SEMA, our friends at SEMA and, and uh, Sigalon, because they helped set up a lot of what we're going to tell you about today. So Visite is a leading company in the stem cell derived cell replacement field that you've been hearing a lot about here. Um, we, are, we believe that this has many applications, but our current focus and uh, focus that we've had for over, well over a decade now is to provide a functional cure for patients with type 1 diabetes. As you already heard, type 1 diabetes represents an ideal target for cell replacement therapy. Um, T1D is caused by an autoimmune destruction of beta cell. If we can replace those beta cells, we can potentially correct the disease. And also, you've heard that cell therapy has already gotten a pr proof of concept using cadaver islets that are taken from pancreases, from cadavers infused into the liver. And many of these patients are still insulin independent uh, five, 10 years after that treatment. And also, it has the advantage of having very straightforward endpoint. These patients, when they come into our trials, are completely dependent on insulin, um, what's called C-peptide negative, which is a biomarker for insulin. Uh, so when we treat them, if they're now producing insulin, it's a yes or no answer. Our platform technologies for islet replacement therapies are shown briefly here. One is that we have a GMP uh, stem cell, pluripotent stem cell line. It's an embryonic stem cell line that we isolated uh, quite some time ago. This is probably one of the most thoroughly tested uh, pluripotent lines in existence. It's been through uh, lots of testing, both preclinical toxicology testing and other types of testing. It's been reviewed by regulators at the FDA, Health Canada, and regulators in Europe, and been given a green light as a starting material for the manufacture of our products. Of course, the next big thing is to take those pluripotent stem cells and drive them to a pancreatic cell that we can implant. Uh, we typically focus on what we call PECO1 cells, which are pancreatic progenitor cells that are most of the way there and destined to go the rest of the way after implantation. However, these are considered stage four cells. We also can go to stage five, six, and seven cells. And in fact, we're right now getting gearing up to test those head to head in the clinic to really understand what is the best, most advantageous cell type to put in these patients. And then we have a, a family of delivery devices for subcutaneous delivery under the skin, and these are macro encapsulation devices. We have three products that we're currently focused on, two of which are in the, at the clinical stage, and one is a, a discovery stage program. Uh, the first one I'll mention is PEC Direct. This uses these PECO1 cells that I mentioned. It uses an open device. It's a device that has ports that are purposely engineered into the surface of this me membrane to allow direct vascularization. This makes for a very robust, very um, islet-like uh, approach to getting these cells into the patient. But it does require uh, immunosuppression. Uh, so it's only really useful for the high-risk patient population. About 10% of type 1 diabetics are in the high-risk category. Another product we're developing in the clinic is PEC and CAP. This is, uses the same cells, but now in a device that we call the Encaptor cell delivery device, which provides a immune protection for these cells. It has a semi-permeable membrane. It requires a vascular network to form on the surface of that membrane and then diffusion across that membrane of the oxygen, nutrients, and proteins and such coming out. But it protects the cells from the host immune system. So this is designed to be used without long-term immunosuppression and therefore opening it up to all patients that require insulin for, with diabetes. The last pro project that I'll mention is uh, what we call PECQT. This is a new project for us. We recently announced a collaboration with CRISPR Therapeutics. In this, we're taking our, our very well-characterized um, stem cell and looking to make it immunogenic or reduce its immunogenicity so that we can make an immunivasive product. And this would be able to be delivered in an open device or even without a device uh, and without the need for immunosuppression. One of the things that I think is important to understand in this field um, is that the clinical evaluation of these human therapies 
is critical not just for developing the product for showing it's safe and effective for use, but really to understand what the challenges are on this product. The preclinical animal models have really limited utility uh, to fully understand what you're going to get in humans. And this is because when these cells go into a human, they're human cells into a, a human, not the patient cells, but an allogeneic transplant. When they're in animals, it's a xenotransplant. Uh, it's a different cross-species transplant. So these human studies that we've been conducting are essential to understand the, the product characteristic and optimize therapy. And we've been in the clinic now for over three years with these programs. Uh, we use Sentinels. You see pictures of two of our devices here. Um, one's a large dose-ranging device, but that EN20 that's labeled there is a Sentinel device. It's about the size of your, your thumbnail, and we can put these in, fill them with cells, and we can put anywhere from six to ten of these into a patient in different locations with different procedures, um, even different cell, cell types, and then we can do direct comparison. So it really provides a very elegant and, and powerful methodology for for analyzing and then optimizing these, these treatments. So just a, a brief glimpse in each of these programs. So with PEC Direct, the clinical status is we have an IND and a Canadian CT open uh, that we opened last year. We're just getting ready to start some trials in Europe with this as well. Uh, we're currently enrolling in a phase one, two study across six sites in the US and Canada. Uh, the first cohort, which was five patients, was completed to show that it was safe and well tolerated. We also wanted to see that we were getting that direct vascularization that those ports give us, and, and we showed that. Um, the second cohort is the phase two part of this. We're now enrolling in that, that portion of the study. We've got about 20 patients now enrolled in cohort two. Uh, we're using these sentinels to take them out, find out what's going on, and optimize as we go forward in that. We expect to do 40 or more patients, depending on how much optimization we decide to do. Um, but we're hope, looking to, uh, for efficacy endpoints of C-peptide reduction at six, six months and many secondary endpoints. So just some preliminary findings on that. The open architecture device over, has definitely overcome this foreign body response, just as it was designed to do. Every graph shows good evidence of vascularization. We've seen uh, in vivo differentiation of pancreatic progenitor cells to endocrine tissue as expected. The immune suppression that we're using it with these patients are, is successfully protecting the grass from allogeneic and autoimmune rejection. And we are expecting to see proof of concept or proof of efficacy within the next six to 12 months. This work is not only important for PEC Direct, but it's giving us valuable insight into the programs in general that will pay off for PEC and CAP and PEC QT. So with regards to PEC and CAP clinical, this was actually the first program we put into the clinic uh, almost four years ago. And we went forward with this one because we wanted to understand how was the body going to react to a device, uh, a, uh, device encapsulated cell therapy like this. We knew from uh, animal models, most of the animal models that almost everybody does is a model that has a very mild foreign body response and everything works great in that model. Okay? We've done thousands of these animals. The product works beautifully. You get a good vascularization on the surface of the membrane uh, and the cells uh, differentiate and survive long term. However, we also had data back then in a model that is very aggressive foreign body response that nobody gets it to work. Okay, and in that model, we saw very poor uh, engraftment, very uh, poor vascularization because of a, a foreign body giant cell layer that lays down on the surface of that device. So the question was, what are humans? Are we more like the mild or more like the aggressive? The answer is we're more like the aggressive, and we showed this in a study called the Step 1 trial. Uh, we did a, a first cohort. It was all done at subtherapeutic doses. We did evaluated 19 patients to look at safety and really answer that question of whether humans were more like the, the mild model or the aggressive model. So what we found in that study uh, is the, uh, after 19 patients, we found it to be safe and well tolerated in these patients. The encaptor device did protect the cells against the immune rejection as it was designed to do, so we were thrilled to see that. Um, and we also demonstrated that when you did get engraftment, when you did get regions that got vascularized, they in fact did, uh, the cells survived and they became islet tissue under the skin. Uh, and we saw that out to even, out to two years. 
Um, however, we did observe that very aggressive foreign body response that severely limited the engraftment of the, of the product. So we basically paused the study after the 19 patients, and we went back to do some further work. We did this with, in a collaboration. Uh, the material that this membrane is made of is, is called expanded PTFE. That's essentially Gore-Tex. So we went to the world's expert in this material. Um, uh, W.L. Gore and Associates and formed a collaboration. This has been a fantastic collaboration for us. We've worked very closely with our, our colleagues at Gore to uh, take that material and change it in many, many different ways. They have multiple ways they can change the geometry, change the way that th that material acts. And so we've been testing those in this very aggressive animal model. And we're pleased to say we've made really exciting uh, progress on this. We now have membrane materials that will give us in that aggressive model the kind of data we were used to in the mild model. And th that's shown here, where we see five to six time and six-fold improvement in the activity in this model. Uh, and we see very good cell survival and differentiation. So we're now taking uh, those membranes, uh, at least uh, two of them, and planning to go back into the clinic. The IND remains open. The um, uh, protocol is still open. We plan to move back into the clinic to further test this in the patients, the only really appropriate model. PECQT is our, our newest project I mentioned. Um, it's really, as I said, taking the stem cell line and engineering it to be immune evasive. Um, as you can imagine, if you have a prepotent stem cell line, one of the best tested out there, we've got many patents on this, um, and you can make that an immune evasive line now, that gives you the opportunity to make any cell in the body if you know how to drive it. Okay. Our initial focus is, again, going to be on diabetes, and, and with our partner now, CRISPR, we're planning to, to focus this activity to make a kind of a third-generation diabetes product that uh, is immune evasive, and we're very excited about that. So the deal we did with CRISPR Therapeutics, we, plan, we are set up a, a joint program, a collaborative program where we'll work together. We received an upfront payment uh, from uh, CRISPR of 25 million, 10 million of that in a convertible debt that we can take down uh, depending on financing over the next couple months. And then um, we will jointly work to develop and commercialize any resulting diabetes products. They will pay about 60% of development costs, but we'll share equally in any profits on that. And this is really building on Viacite's really extensive intellectual property portfolio, which is shown here. We have been working in this field. Uh, the, the current company came together when three companies were merged uh, about uh, a dozen years ago, uh, but even went before that. And over that time, we have accumulated a, a patent portfolio that is really impressive. We have over 700 issued patents worldwide, 125 patents in the U.S., really covering all aspects of, of driving those cells from a pluripotent cell up to a beta cell uh, in the manufacturing. And in fact, all the way through stage four, all the way through stage six and seven, we have patents at every stage of the way. The underlying patents there are composition and matter patents. The green ones are actually patents that came to us uh, a few years ago we consolidated Janssen Beta Logics, which is another group that was working in the same area for about 10 years under the Janssen umbrella. Uh, we consolidated that into Viasite, and so all of their patents and technology also moved over to our platforms. So we're really excited about that. So in summary, we believe we are certainly the leading clinical stage company in this space uh, in, in the stem cell drive cell therapy sector. Um, we have world-class technology platforms for cell production, for differentiation, for delivery. We have a very strong IP portfolio that covers all aspects of that. We have two major product candidates that are undergoing clinical evaluation, PEC Direct for the highest risk patients, uh, which we expect to have uh, potential for efficacy demonstration and efficacy next year. Um, and PEC and CAP, which is now getting ready to resume clinical studies uh, with uh, restarting this, this trial, starting to enroll again in the first part of next year. So we're really excited about that. Plus this immune evasive pluripotent stem cell line project, we, can't, we couldn't be happier working with CRISPR on this. Uh, we believe it gives us the potential for next generation diabetes therapies, but many other potential applications. 
And we're really proud to be working with world leaders in the respective fields. You can't do any better in WL Gore when it comes to the device. People think of Gore for, for outerwear and tennis shoes and all. About 50% of their revenue comes from implantable medical devices. So they are world's experts in this area. And CRISPR Therapeutics is considered one of the leading companies in the gene editing space. And then our work with J&J &J continues. So couldn't be more excited. We're looking forward to a great 2019. And thank you for your attention.